Here we are once again at the finale of another Disney Plus series and uh... I don't know if the crowds are happy right now. What I'm going to be doing here for you guys is not only breaking down the finale of Secret Invasion Episode 6, but I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on the entire series as a whole. Has Marvel learned their lesson about how to handle a Disney Plus series? Are these six episode formats even working? Along with like some of the giant changes made into the MCU that has us scratching our heads and maybe even feeling like they kind of ruined something really special in one of the best Marvel movies they've made. But I don't want to just be about my opinion okay i want to hear from you guys what did you think about secret invasion as a whole where would you maybe rank it in all the other series all that goodness would love to hear it down below but okay starting off here i want to talk about the good with secret invasion and the things i actually enjoyed about the show i do think it's one of the better disney plus series i don't think it's their best at all i'm still going to give that title to loki as my personal opinion but for the most part the show had me really engaged i like the more serious tone they were going with the exploration of nick fury as a character in giving him this arc from someone who kind of lost his way after being blipped in Infinity War to now trying to find himself back and become that threatening spy that Nick Fury always was. You know, finding more about his home life, who he married, even specifically on the scrolls, I think Gravik is probably one of the better villains we've had in a Disney Plus series. I don't think he got used to his full potential in here, but there were so many moments where Gravik was given the spotlight and I was like, man, I'm really liking how compelling this character is. He's someone who's built on a lot of revenge, a lot of anger, and, and even the speech he gives in this final episode where he reveals to us the reason he chose this to be his human face is because it's the first human he killed and every human after that just made him lose a little bit more of himself until he became this monster. Early on in the series, there was also a lot of stakes involved. I thought the opening with like General Ross in there and even Kobe Smulders as Maria Hill dying, even the way they went about taking down Talos. I really thought, okay, they are making me feel bad for a lot of these characters, which is more than I could say for a lot of other Disney Plus series. But even with some of those positive things said about the show, it's still a six episode Disney Plus series that feels super messy. It feels like it's going off with a great start, throws in a couple of nice ideas, things you want to see explored, saves it all, builds it up till that finale episode where we get the big CGI battle, the answer to a couple of questions, and then it's all just rushed and kept off with so many more questions left than we got answered. It's that thing where everything feels like it is just set up for the next thing and we're never completing a new story brought to us. Like, I honestly can't think to myself to want to go back to re-watch any of these old Disney Plus series in the same way I would want to go re-watch the first Ant-Man movie, the first Cat America movie, heck even Shang-Chi. Those are movies with a contained story that are all just there with only light setup to other things in other movies. The entire project doesn't feel like this is just going to be something that's going to pay off in two or three movies down the line. We've already discussed how the upcoming The Marvels movie is a sequel to so many things. The first Captain Marvel movie, WandaVision, Miss Marvel, and now the end of Secret Invasion. And there are things at the end of this finale that are going to come into play to other upcoming Marvel movies that just make it feel like it's losing its steam. But diving more into like specifics with this finale and things that like really irked me is for one, the Colonel Rhodes situation. That was like a big discussion point early on in the series. A lot of us could have predicted they were a scroll and when it got revealed, we were like, okay, it's true. Now it's just like, how long have they been a scroll? And in this episode, we get to see the actual Colonel Rhodes being saved, who is in a hospital nightgown, one that looks extremely similar to when he was in the hospital during the events of Civil War after he got injured and was no longer able to walk on his own. Now, because the show is still wanting to keep things a mystery, not wrap up all loose ends so it can be a setup for another thing, we don't have that exact confirmation. This could be Rhodes who was taken away since the events of Civil War and ever since then where it's Infinity War, Endgame, Falcon and the Winter Soldier that has always been a scroll working in the backgrounds trying to gain the trust of the US government just to be a plant for the scrolls. And you know what? Maybe on paper that sounds cool. That's an interesting idea. It changes your perspective. You can go back and watch Infinity War, Endgame and all those stuff and be like, oh, this roadie was acting maybe a bit different. I wasn't always like this. Neither.
But to me, if that turns out being the case, it kind of ruins one of the most heartfelt moments of the MCU, and that's the death of Tony Stark. That means we had a scroll reacting to the death of his best friend. Then at the funeral, we didn't even have Rhodey actually there. That was a scroll also? I was also someone extremely looking forward to Armor Wars because I always thought Don Cheadle's War Machine was like an underrated character that never got fully utilized. And the fact that he was getting his own movie where he would be the star and probably get a lot of badass scenes as War Machine. Now we're going to have to deal with a big subplot in this movie about what it was like being brainwashed, being in a trance and letting someone else run around and control your life and how that affects you. It's like... I feel so bad for the people who don't want to watch these Disney Plus shows or don't keep up with everything going into Armor Wars thinking, oh, they gave Rhodey his own movie. He was a scroll? He, he was gone for five years? What? When did this happen? But again, I'm hoping maybe they retcon it, they change it up. Maybe he just was going to the hospital during one of his like yearly visits to check up on his legs and he was switched out then. As long as Rhodey was switched out after the events of Endgame, I'd be a lot happier as a fan. Now diving into like the big CGI final battle that we have in Secret Invasion that we all figured was coming up. I was wondering how they were going to handle this because I wanted Gravik to get those superpowers. I wanted him to get the harvest DNA that good old messed up Nick Fury, paranoid man, has been collecting the DNA of almost every superpowered being that's ever stepped on Earth. And I'm not going to lie, for a lot of those action scenes, it was kind of badass. It was actually really fun to watch. Yeah, there was a Part of me that was like man these guys are overpowered as heck but every time a familiar character from the past movies would appear you know whether it be mantis ebony maw Groot, drax i couldn't help but to geek out a little bit and think man gravix turned into pretty badass villain but like most stuff that battle was short-lived and ended pretty quickly and the fact also that gaia killed him using captain marvel powers just lets me go Fury should have just called Captain Marvel from the beginning and handled this problem right away. And now this leaves us with who is, without a doubt, the most powerful character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Gaia. I know there will be a side of people complaining because, oh, they made another female, the big powerful in the MCU. Nothing to do with it here. You could have made it a guy and I'd have the same complaints. To me, it's just... It feels so anticlimactic. You introduce now one of the most overpowered people in the MCU in just a side handoff show and just let them fade off into the distance, making us ask the big old question, wonder if we'll ever see them again. They are extremely useful for any situation. Now, you literally have the powers of an entire Avengers team and more in one individual. I have no idea what Kevin Feige is cooking or what they're setting up for that character, and, and I don't even know if I'm that interested to see it because Gaia, to me, throughout the series hasn't been that interesting. The conversations she would have with Talos would be interesting to me, but that's kind of like the downside of these six-episode series. They're only given in so much runtime, especially when each episode gets lower and lower. We started out with like almost a full hour episode down to the finale being about 30 minutes long. There wasn't enough of Gaia in there for me to be like, oh dude, I can't wait to see her pop up. She's going to be awesome using all those superpowers. I'm just like, she exists. And now I'm going to be asking every Marvel project, why is no one calling Gaia? Where's Gaia at? Ga Gaia will take this down in a heartbeat, y'all. And that, again, to me, just feels like such an odd choice. Maybe Kevin Feige is cooking up something great and this will all pay off, but the amount of side characters and powerful people introduced in different Disney Plus shows and different movies that are just now scattered everywhere, it just makes other characters that we do like and enjoy following feel less useful or less special. Like the Marvel movie is about to deal with this intertwined connection that like Monica Rambeau, Miss Marvel, and Captain Marvel have because they have powers connected to the light. Gaia now has powers connected to the light and I doubt she's gonna be included at all in that movie. It just feels like random things being stuck on a wall and if fans respond to it, okay, we'll do something more with it and if they don't, oh, they'll just disappear. We'll never hear about them again. Gaia who? To me, what really sucks the most is man, seeing a scroll with like all those powers and the way they use it because I didn't even think the CGI looked that rough. I've saw some people complain. 
I thought it looked fine. To me, I just would have loved a villain like Gaia or Gravik to go up against the Fantastic Four and be a Super Scroll. Even with just the four powers, that would have been so fun. But now they not only wasted a Super Scroll, they also wasted the Secret Invasion story that I feel could have been a lot larger. Could have been its own movie. Like the ending of this finale, where we get the president now saying, no aliens allowed on my planet. Now it's like, okay, from now on, any alien steps foot, they're immediately a threat, and it creates this paranoid feeling where now random people are arming up and just shooting politicians because maybe there's conspiracies, they're a scroll, or maybe they're not. That felt like a way more interesting route for this show to have that paranoid feeling, and it all just got rushed and wasted through in the last, like, 10 seconds of this show. But again, getting back to it, with all my ranting and complaining aside as a dumb fan, I still think it is one of the better Disney Plus series. I don't think it's as bad as some other ones that have happened in the past. But even if this was great, still, I don't even know if it's that worth it to continue these on. I hope the CEO of Disney, Bob Iger, is telling the truth when he says he's going to slow production down on these shows and movies and kind of space them out, make them feel more like events, because right now it really is just feeling like homework for the fans. It's oversaturating the market and it's over connecting things where now you need to be really specific about what you watch before you go into the next movie. No wonder the box office is hurting for a lot of things. Not everybody has the time or want to do this. They need to be more self-contained stories, not meant to set up someone big for the future. So I'm really curious to see what future Gaia could have with all those awesome powers. But yeah, I saw Secret Invasion once and I I doubt I'll ever want to see it again, along with most, if not all, of the previous Disney Plus series. Again, though, that's just my opinion on it. I definitely want to hear from you guys. You saw the finale of Secret Invasion. Where do you fall on it? What did you like? What didn't you like? Your speculation for some of the things set up in here and where they could go. Anything and everything, be sure and like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.